What up, nerds? Welcome back. The Corona Crew back in action. My Corin Queens and Corin Kings. It's kind of dark out there right now, isn't it? Dismal times. But hey, I haven't left the house in about a week following government orders. I have gone from Nate in the Wild to Nate in the Mild. Hashtag lockdown. I am actually not even wearing pants. I am still in my pajamas and I haven't taken them off for like five days. No ragrats. I get a ton of questions about what is in my bag. And while this question is a little bit more complicated than just a one size fits all answer, because you know, if I'm uh, photographing sloths in Costa Rica, I'm carrying different equipment than if I'm photographing polar bears up in uh, you know Greenland in the middle of the winter. I'm gonna give you like a rough idea. This is what I carry for a single day, like a, going on a day hike, a one day shoot, no overnight gear, nothing super extreme. This would be if I was going to like Mount Rainier National Park or going on a, a day hike with some friends, maybe a commercial photo shoot downtown somewhere where we're out in the street, nothing super extreme. We're not gonna talk about water bottles or filters or tents or any of that. There will be a video in the future though where I discuss that because backpacking photography is a whole different subset. So what's in my bag actually begins with what is my bag. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that I am an enormous fan of the F-Stop series of backpacks. My day-to-day, -day, my everyday carry bag is the F-Stop Tilopa. This is a 50 liter bag. I really love all the different compartments. It's rugged, it's made of a pretty burly, material. Um, to be honest, I've done things to this that would probably make the designers kind of nervous and it still looks more or less as good as the day I got it. I'm pretty impressed with the ruggedness and the durability of it. I also have a 70 liter version. This is called the Suka. It's also by F-Stop. I also like the color of this because there's times when you don't want that neon orange of the 50 liter Tilopa. There's times, especially for wildlife photography, when you need to be as unobtrusive as possible, and this is my go-to bag in that instance. So one of the first questions I often get is how do I keep my gear lightweight and portable so that it's easy to carry out on these gigs? And the unfortunate answer, I guess, is that I, I don't. It's not light, it's a pretty heavy bag because I'm a professional photographer. I'm getting paid to get these photos. I'm not there to have a leisurely fun stroll through the woods with my friends. I'm there to work hard, get the shot, and get the job done. Hashtag, hire me. That said, there are a couple ways that you can cut back on the weight of your gear without sacrificing the professional quality of your work. And for me, the first thing there is the tripod. This is the Vanguard VO2 265CB. It's not the best naming convention, is it? That's a total mouthful. It's lightweight, it's light enough that it's not a major burden to carry, but it's still rugged and it's stiff. It, it supports a full frame professional camera, DSLR or mirrorless, although we all know you should be using mirrorless by now, come on, it's 2020. So what's actually in my bag? Let's go through it. First off, I carry two bodies with me at all times. I have an A7R3, which is my primary body. Um, it's 10 frames per second burst. I love the 42 megapixels of resolution. It has still really good autofocus, really fast speeds. For me, it is, it's the ultimate camera. I know there's an A7R4, but I found that resolution to be a little bit overkill. Plus, I tend to shoot in somewhat low light conditions. This camera is the perfect middle ground for me. Beyond that, I also have an A7 III as my backup camera. I love having this as a backup camera because the video performance is excellent. The lower resolution means that the low light performance for astrophotography is off the hook, which obviously if you've watched any of my other videos, you know. But also it's just nice to have a backup camera that's a little bit different than your regular one. This is a little bit of a preference thing. A lot of photographers like to have the exact same camera for their main body and their backup body so that if something happens during a shoot, you aren't switching to a different set up, um, making any sort of sacrifices. But for me, out in the woods, I'm using my two cameras for completely different things. I'll have the a7 III running a 6K time-lapse while I'm using the a7R III to shoot stills. Or one will be doing video tight cropped uh, with a telephoto lens and the other one will be running video wide angle. So I like having two different cameras. Personal preference, your mileage may vary. I also wanna mention, I use these Peak Designs quick disconnect straps for 
everything. They're on my camera. They are on my backpack. I even have one of these little dongles on the bottom of my backpack so that if my camera's on a tripod next to a cliff, I can stretch this rope out and clip it to my backpack so that it doesn't fall off the cliff if a gust of wind comes. I have seen it happen to people and it's sad. Lenses, 16 to 35 f2.8. This is never not on one of my cameras. I love this lens. There's an F4 version that would be a great way to save weight if that's something you're into, but as mentioned, I'm here to get the shot. The F2.8 is great. I can use it for astro. I can use it for some portraits. It's an incredible landscape lens. I bet 80% of the photos on my Instagram are from this lens. I will never go without it. For a real astrophotography extravaganza, I'm rocking that Sony 20 millimeter F1.8. If you saw my YouTube review from a couple weeks ago, Maybe YouTube review is an interesting way to say it. It was more like a, a love letter, like almost bordering on like kind of a sensual romance novel. I like this thing. This is my low light go-to nowadays. Used to use some other lenses. They're dead to me now. Cut them out of the family. They're sleeping with the fishes. This is my boy for astrophotography, low light, everything along that. Sometimes you need a little bit more compression than the 16 to 35 is able to get you. So the 24 to 70 F2.8 G Master is in my bag as well. It is worth mentioning on the ultralight projects where I'm doing something really extreme, I will actually forego this lens. I love it and I take a ton of photos with it, but I actually do skip it for a lot of projects because with the 42 megapixels on my A7R 3 I can skip the 24 to 70 and I can crop in from the 16 to 35 to hit that focal range and then use the 70 to 200 for things that are farther away. It's not the perfect setup, but it actually does get the job done when the situation is tough and I can't carry everything on my back. 70 to 200 F4, I love it. The image stabilization inside is exceptional. I don't ever find myself really needing F2.8. If the light is getting low enough that I need that extra aperture, I have the A7 III in my bag, which is a low light machine. So there's really kind of, the way I build my bag, I guess, is versatile enough that I can make do with everything in there and never feel like I need to carry more. Never need to carry more, he says, with like 17 pounds of shit on his desk. This thing, the blower. Super important. Clone stamping little dust spots out of your photos, that's one thing. Clone stamping dust spots out of a video or a time lapse, you're gonna be grumpy. Okay, on to the miscellaneous. Bag of batteries. Do I really need to talk about why you need this? Just bring some batteries. Microphone. I don't do a ton of video projects, but it's always a little bit of a concern that there might be a video component, and it's really important to have good audio for those projects. This is the Rode uh, Wireless 2. It's just basically a really simple lavalier clip-on. This part goes on the camera. This other little guy clips onto your shirt and is a microphone. It's fantastic. I've used it in several of my videos you've watched here. I love it. I can't recommend it enough. It's tiny. The battery lasts for hours and uh, it doesn't add enough weight to your bag that you even need to think about bringing it. Just toss it in there. Filters. Filters are one of the things I still haven't honestly figured out exactly what I like to carry with me. This is a pretty small manageable chunk to have with me for every project, but depending on the specialties, you can tell I have other options. Up here is a night sky filter, extra UV filters, and those are always good to have, but here is my daily carry. In this container is actually two filters. I have the Breakthrough Photography six stop ND filter and a 10 stop ND filter. I keep them screwed together because I can fit two of them in one case, which saves me space in my bag. I don't wanna carry each individual plastic case because that takes up a ton of space. And I haven't actually found a multi-filter case that I love yet that actually seals out dust, etc. It just saves me a little bit of peace of mind, I guess, to keep them in these original plastic cases that seal shut. Two ND filters, and then a circular polarizer. Breakthrough Photography has several different tiers of their filters. I use the X4 caliber for all of them. Once again, just because I'm a professional, this is my source of income. I have used the X2 filters in the past, and honestly, they're incredible. You can't go wrong with them. But the X4 is the way to go if you're really looking for the ultimate. So I wanna mention that these filters are 82 millimeters, which is the filter thread diameter of the 24 to 70 
and the 16 to 35. So these both fit, or all of these filters fit on both of my two primary lenses. But in addition to these filters, I carry step-up rings. They're small, they weigh almost nothing, and it allows me to not only save like $800 by only having a single set of filters, but save a ton of space and weight in my bag by bringing this instead of a completely separate filter kit for my other lenses. I also sometimes carry a drone. It sucks and it's heavy, but it looks really cool up in the sky. I don't really need to talk about this. You all know what a drone is. If you own one, sick. If you don't, you probably want one. Cool. Okay, now we're getting down into the nitty gritty. Extra memory cards. Once again, the most important thing you can ever do. Don't clear cards on assignment. Back the cards up onto your computer. Keep the photos on the card until you get home. You want to have at least two of everything. This case is waterproof and theoretically crush proof. Thank God I haven't had to test that yet. Uh, it's small. It lives in my camera bag, so I never have to worry about getting somewhere without a memory card. If I pull the card out of my camera after I film this video and accidentally leave it on my desk, and I go out on an assignment in like July when all the quarantines are lifted, I'm still going to have, what is this, like seven, eight cards here? Never go without one. It's very important. This little thing, a little Fotix Nuada S, it's a light. Cool, right? It's just a little panel light. It's got this detachable battery. It charges quick. Carry it with me. You never know when you're going to need a little extra light. And this isn't just for portraits or video work. I've actually used this to illuminate craft beers for commercial photography inside breweries, uh, product photography, lay flats of certain things. This is actually the light that I use for most of my YouTube videos. And I had to borrow one from my girlfriend so I could show it to you on camera. So now we're getting down into the tiny details. And these are things that I carry in my camera bag at all times. And I can't stress enough how important they are, even though they kind of seem like an afterthought. So in this top pocket, I have a headlamp, the most important thing to make sure you always have. Even if you're not going hiking, it's good to have a headlamp in your backpacks because what if your car breaks down driving home from the gig and you're on some weird back county road? It's just good to have an extra light. Along those same lines, I also carry a small set of Allen wrenches and additional tools for repairing my tripod, camera, etc. I have embarrassed myself several times by not having the exact gear that I need to repair something in the field. This is important. Another major benefit to the f-stop bags, they have one of these quick connect systems inside the bag. So you can have a spare Allen wrench some keys. These are the keys actually that lock my 400 millimeter F2.8 hard case. I keep one of the spares in my camera bag at all times because once again, if you forget and leave it at home and you fly to Baffin Island and you forgot the key to unlock it, what are you going to do? Just keep it in your bag. And then the two most important things in this bag a one terabyte solid state memory drive. I back up all of my photos onto this as well as onto my laptop. And then a card reader. It's just everything you need. Okay, so that's the story of all the junk in my trunk, AKA a brief history of how I got quads like a T-Rex. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have any other questions, if there's any gear you're curious about, and if you'd like to see me make any more videos along these lines in the future. I've linked everything down below that I talked about here in case you're curious and you want to go out and shop a little bit. And I can't stress enough right now, all of the links below are affiliate links. Times are tight for everybody, but it costs nothing extra for you and it makes a world of difference for me if you would make your shopping purchases through those links below. It would make a huge difference as we move forward into this uh, unfortunate lockdown situation. Everyone's a little bit low on work. I would really appreciate it. So hey, thanks so much. I'm Nate in the mild, I guess now. Um, like, subscribe, you know, forehead tattoo, etc. all the usual stuff. I'll see you next time.